What's up, my friends? Welcome to another episode of Breakfast with Sergio. I'm here with my friend Master and Memen, all the way joining us from Toronto, Canada. We're going to talk about how she sold an entire art collection right now during you know, the coronavirus as well without having a website or an online shop, only running it through her social media channel. So it's going to be a great conversation. Don't go anywhere. Well, hi, Masarin. Good to see you. How are you? Good to see you too, Sergio. I'm well. Thank you. Thank you for joining us all the way from Canada. How is the day for you so far? We are always complaining about the weather in Canada. So it's really <laughs> hot and now we're complaining about the hot and now it's going to get into fall and really bad winter. So we're going to complain about that. So it's <laughs> always, it, but it's good. It's a beautiful sunny day. So kind of yeah. sounds like Chicago. When it's cold, we complain it's too cold. When it's hot, it's too hot, you know? And yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, Masarin, again, uh, I want to chat with you today about something that um, uh, is very uh, interesting, how you release a body of work, you know, running down through the lockdown and so on, and you were able to promote it all through your social media and get it out to new collectors and so on. So I want to kind of pick your brain a little bit about that, how you did that. You know, something that I've been also talking a little bit about here in the podcast and in the programs and all those things, you know, to help our artist friends, you know, also um, make uh, the sales that they might need to do, especially right now with everything that's going on. Shows have been canceled, uh, open studios and galleries are closed. So, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty and this can help many of our artist friends watching today also, you know, experience some success on that as well. So, Masen, tell me a little bit about kind of like the process. So, uh, when when did you start thinking about, okay, I want to do a series that I want to release, you know, specifically through social media? So, basically, with this isolation that started, I started thinking big images, which you see behind, and I started yeah. looking at, you know, the isolation series, and we started hearing talks about how beautiful the planet has become, there are wild animals on the streets and the cities because you know suddenly the air quality but then i realized that the bigger the paintings were without a website where people can't really look at the trajectory of the work because my site is under construction mm -hmm. um that i realized that the big works without people seeing it are not going to spend the thousands of dollars mm -hmm. um so i had to rethink that i want to still make it relevant to the period we are living in and the funny part was i started getting all these emails, these chain emails on let's share a recipe and then tag so and so and then, you know, these family meals and then a million sourdough bread recipes online. And I thought, <laughs> okay, at the end of the day, we all need spices. And also being on Art Next Level with you, I was kind of also going into who I am and what my roots were. And the one thing that connects everyone is food. I think, whether you're Italian yeah. or Indian or, you know, it's food. Totally agree with um, that, yeah. Yeah, and spices do add. I mean, we're never going to eat a raw vegetable. I mean, <laughs> okay, carrots and stuff. But generally, it's what do we add? What is it that brings the earthiness out? People were just showing their spice racks. And I thought, this is it. I'm going to talk about spices. And I'm going to talk about the Ayurveda and all the things that I grew up in in India. Mm. But I didn't talk about it as a collection. I just started talking about spices and I started talking about a different medium. Uh, and I love, I love mixed media. So I started talking about, okay, I'm experimenting with this because we're all experimenting with a new way of life now. How are we recreating our days, you know, in lockdown? So all of that kind of gelled for me. Uh, so that was why the, this particular body of work why this um, basically the spices it just kind of connected with a wider audience i wasn't kind of niching any one person mm -hmm. and i think everyone connected with it mm -hmm. to a certain extent so that was why the collection why the i love spices. that idea because you're, you're you're totally right right everywhere that you go in any part of the world, we all have like of different spices or different things that gives a flavor. Yeah. So tell me then about the process of marketing. So what did you decide to do on how to release the series to your, uh, to your base, to your social media? So basically when this lockdown started in March, it was maybe my birthday month in April. At some point I decided I need to switch up gears a little bit and can't go this large because yeah. What I started doing is putting myself in the buyer's place and I thought, okay, a three, four, five thousand dollar painting. I, I I can't just I really need more. 
to yeah. just although a lot of things are being bought online so mm -hmm. when i started this collection what i started doing was i started talking about it through my kitchen so i would take little videos of um and i was working on small paper works like this so yeah. i would, it was easy Beautiful. to carry it into my stu into my kitchen and then if i started throwing peppercorns or i started making tea with uh, lemongrass i'd put that on the paper and i'd start shooting and i think oh this is a really nice wisp of lemongrass and this is a beautiful bay leaf and um well i'm quite kind of inspired to create uh, something this form kind of reminds me of the bay leaf so i started talking about it mm -hmm. more than talking about it as a collection i started talking about the process i started mm -hmm. engaging people in what i'm doing but what i did was i didn't overwhelm them with all of that because that would be like by the time i launched okay we've been there done that seen it now, <laughs> right, what's yeah. next what's so, next exactly exactly so what i'd come back and i'd start working on some of my bigger works and show uh -huh. them that okay now that this this is dry this is still a body of work i'm working on and i started injecting um that but i kept telling them i don't have a site so follow me here my site is under review but i keep giving them information that everybody is going online so i need an e-commerce site so i would start i would start giving them a little bit of information so that they would not say oh where's the site that i could go to or what can i do and i would say email me or dm me if you need mm -hmm. more information then i'd engage them into what is your favorite spice what are the three things you do say a cardamom in so things mm -hmm. like that is how i till i really figured okay i have about 25 pieces now i can think of a launch yeah that's so that's wonderful and i love how you uh, you took the artwork to the kitchen and uh you know make that that beautiful connection so yeah. you know or the viewer would connect that you know the idea of the spices the collection and everything you know it, it, it does make uh something that i always talk about you know it makes you as the artist uh more like us as the people on the other side right who may yes. not be the artist the collector the uh you know the lawyer the doctor you know who may be following you maybe a friend or maybe somebody who loves your work but then now sees you that you are also talking about all these things that you know makes us more human it's not just right. the art put it put on a gallery that you know seems sometimes kind of out of reach or far away or or kind of elitist right. this in some way but now you're presenting yourself in a way that that we can connect with you because i might be in the kitchen too preparing my next meal exactly right? <laughs> exactly it kind of the connection was not just the aesthetics but also the medicinal values uh -huh. with the beauty of the spices so it was really storytelling before i got to okay now i have a collection and i'm going to launch it excellent so then tell me about the release so um you had a very successful release of your artwork you sold the entire series within uh, 10 days or so right yeah. or release so tell me a little bit about that process you know um because you were running it all directly through social media so how did you uh, run your um, you know your sales process so one thing i realized is uh, i don't have a lot of followers on instagram which is totally mm -hmm. fine yeah. um but i realized that i had to talk about my older relationships and mm -hmm. my previous buyers and everyone would write to me so what i really do is when people write to me what work from me before I would say I'd love another piece or I saw this or a friend would say I've seen this piece but I can't afford whenever you do smaller works will you let me know or do you do prints of your work now I haven't really done prints of my work as yet uh -huh. so I always keep a a list a separate of list of people who have connected with me and asked me or um Instagram helped me with the DMs they would say oh I love that you have you you're launching this please let me know i got your name from so and so so what i started doing is that was my email list i don't have an email newsletter yet because uh -huh. till my site's complete i'm not quite sure of my trajectory so what i started doing is i took pictures and a little film using impresso and canva yeah. and i started sending them personal and private um little emails and told them I know that you've been waiting for something that's affordable. Oh, great. Um what I'm going to do is for people who have not had the chance to buy my work, if you want a preview of this work, let me know and you get a chance. And that I kind of put on Facebook too. So what I started doing is I used my personal Facebook mm -hmm. along with my Instagram 
and my um, business Facebook because those relationships were deeper. Those were the people who knew me better. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, basically, I just cross posted everywhere. Yeah. So this is what I did. And I told them I'm launching on this on uh, the summer solstice. But mm -hmm. prior to that, on the 19th, if you want to get a preview and to buy the pieces, let me know. So I had people coming into the studio, sending me a message, sending me an e-transfer, and I put aside five pieces on the 19th itself. Mm -hmm. So that's how I kind of started working towards it. Um, so yeah, my personal thing was more important than the IG mm -hmm. and my Facebook. But I think it just depends on what works for you at what point. Exactly. So that's how I kind of went about it. Yeah, and, and sometimes we assume like, oh, the same people that are following me on Instagram are the same ones that are on Facebook and not necessarily. And sometimes no. it may be the same person, but sometimes they might not see you in both places, right? Yeah. Because the algorithms, as we all know, prevent us from showing to everybody. So you may have a thousand followers, but that doesn't mean a thousand people saw your post, maybe only, right. you know, one, two hundred. So then going in into another platform and also sharing there, you know, you may be able to catch some of the ones that we did not see you in the first one. So it, right. it all, it all uh, helped. What are some of the, like the, the top two or three kind of takeaways that you, you said that out of now once I finished my release and I saw everything out, you know, looking back, what are the, like the top three biggest lessons that uh, you uh, kind of learned from uh, this, uh, uh, this release? I think one thing is definitely storytelling and how you are connected with the work. I think mm -hmm. I needed to showcase how important this particular, that I wasn't just releasing a collection. Mm -hmm. um, and I felt that if I keep things topical to where we are at the moment, for example, I'm doing another small series and these are little, little ones again. And this is nice. again going to be called, um, it takes a village. We always say it takes uh, a yes. village to raise uh -huh. people. So right. now this, so I felt that the storytelling was important. We were cooking. Now that we are outside, we are now going to live in a community where we have to look out for each other. So in Canada, well, I know all of Ontario, masks are absolutely necessary. So again, I'm talking about our homes and the people that now spill out, but we still need to perform as a community. So one was the storytelling. The other was not inundating just because I have a collection releasing. I felt that injecting it back and forth with the other works I'm doing yeah. was key because what I saw was, Oh, is the spice collection done? Are, are you finished with it? <laughs> is it created? Is it done? Have you released it? So yeah. if I wasn't consistent for 10, 12 days showcasing that, um, mm -hmm. uh, it helped. Right. And the other thing was, again, I feel that, Pricing is important, I think, mm -hmm. and, and the feasibility of the shipping. So when mm -hmm. people are scaling down, now that things are open and it's online, I can go big. Mm -hmm. But I think these three I felt, the storytelling, the making sure that your life was injected with other works mm -hmm. um, and that you were creating more of the other stuff. These are the three things I felt were really important. And I think the email, like you mentioned, is very key because... I didn't just write and ask them, oh, you remember you'd ask me. It was like, I know you saw this in so-and-so's place and you yeah. were interested in abstract. I kind of, I know what they like. And yeah. I would say, oh, I remember coming to your place and I know you'd bought these sculptures, but you were looking like at a wall of smaller pieces and you love blues. I have a collection of blues. Yeah. Would you like me to send it? So I wouldn't really inundate them with all of it. If I knew that blues were what they like or they like earthy colors, I would just club those pieces and send it along to say, would you like this? So I think... Very nice. Yeah, they, they kind of feel that, oh, she remembered that I like that. She knows she's not just spamming me with the whole 25 yards. Exactly. She's picking and choosing um, what I would like. So... That is awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Masen. You know, that was pretty cool. That's, uh, you know, great insights there. And I think a lot of our friends who are listening right now may also start getting some ideas. May ask, may get a piece of paper and a pen and start writing down names of people that they might know, right? That sometimes yeah, kind of get lost in the, in the cracks. Yeah, exactly. And uh, Masen, um, it's pretty cool that you also were part of the Next Level Academy in my, uh, from your studio to the World Challenge. How did you like being part of that? I loved it. I loved it. I think I've learned so much, which is why it was, yeah, it, it was really informative because um, 
you gave all that information and then you kind of nudged us to figure out what works for us, which was, which was amazing, which is why uh, when you talked about the stories, when Dr. Yanina uh, talked to us about our personal way of going about things, I think all of that gives us a, it gave me a clearer picture of how I should work that knowledge to benefit yeah. my practice. So yeah, it was, yes. Awesome, awesome. It well, was a lot of help. Very cool. Super excited. Well, Mr. Nick, where can our friends find you on social media right now? Because I'm sure many will be curious to go and check out your work and start following you there and connecting with you as well. So all my, all my media platforms are my name. So my Instagram is at Mazarin Memon. Uh, it's just my full name with no dots. Um, and my Facebook page is uh, Mazarin Memon Artist or just Mazarin Memon, my personal page. It's all connected. So... Awesome. Well, Masen, you've been super awesome, super cool. Thank you for, you know, sharing your information. I think that's one of the, the, the things that I love so much about artists like you who share because uh, they're not like, oh, you know, I learned this and I'm just going to keep it for myself, but I want to share with others. So thank you for coming here to the program and sharing those insights as well that I'm sure can help many other artists today as we all continue to evolve and, uh, you know, um, in these kind of difficult times that we're all living in right now. Yeah. So thank you once again, Masen. Thank you so much, Sergio. Have a great day. Thank, thank you. you. Well, to all the friends for watching today, we want to say thank you so much. Please go and follow Mazarin on Instagram. Connect with her. Let her know that you watched this episode today. And please share it with all your friends because the information that was shared today, all these points can also, you know, be uh, shared with others. And so that more the more artists, you know, that can take advantage of this information will be more helpful as well. So thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next episode. Over there with Sergio. Have a great day. Goodbye.